sure it was like in some short time this morning. Oh, I must have been.
that's when I think we got all the way through getting the equation of motion. Right? So if I write up the equation of motion that was uh, the linearized um, equation of motion, well, I, that's right. I guess that, well, I'll just need to write it in there whenever. I don't know. I don't know. So, <clears throat> Let's do it, we'll, we'll do it together one more time. The first, of, you know, because I think the first objective that I asked in the homework is just do this, do this same thing. So I'll go on, we'll do it real quick right here. Take notes and that way, if you write it up, you'll be, you won't have any trouble. All right, so um, what we have done so far in this problem, right, is we used our polar notation here to get this equation, and that is the acceleration, vector form of acceleration, to, components. One is x, one is in the x direction. Right? And one is in the y direction. So um, I've, we've composed these axes, as you can see like on a paper or whatever, compose these axes so that they line up with the, um, the rotation there. So in fact, you know, the idea is whatever is in this equation in the y hat direction is going to equal zero because we're not going to actually be, you know, I guess accelerating the y, y direction, right? But in the x direction, we have these components here. So what we need to do then is we're going to sort of do some of the forces in the x hat direction is equal to m a in the x hat direction. So <clears throat> let's do our sum of the forces for this ball uh, here, right? So the sum of the forces is given in the x hat directions. There's some um, normal force that's associated with this. And I'm going to do, I think I, I do it about the center of the ball. It doesn't matter too much, but let's, let's say we do about the center of the ball. And I get um, some of the force in the x direction is equal to minus mg sine theta minus the tangential force, whatever that is, it's some force that, that controls, you know, makes it so that this thing will roll. If there was no tangential force, it would just slip, right? Um, and then some of the moments about the center is equal to, um, so if I put this in the, thing in the, uh, uh, if I put this, you know, if there's some moments around here, in this case I get a, I don't know what, I'm going to use a sign convention where both both theta and uh, and phi are positive in this sort of right hand direction here. So is equal to minus f t times the radius or whatever of our ball. And obviously m g and f n are both have no moments. In this case, this is equal to the um, i of the ball, the moment of inertia of the ball theta plus v because both, if, you know, if this is rotating, it can rotate, even, even if it's not rolling, obviously it rotates every time that I turn the platform, right? If I flip the platform around in circles, the ball itself is actually rotating in circles as well. Right? Okay, so now all I have to do is sort of, you know, I can make some sort of a, um, uh, I'm going to use this one to solve for, and in this case, right. So I'm going to use this one to solve for Ft is equal to the enrollment of inertia of the ball, theta plus V. I can substitute that in here so that I get, you know, just replace my sum of the forces is equal to minus mg sine theta minus I of the ball over R theta plus V. Yes. Yeah. I don't think a lot of us can't see that. Oh, uh, yeah. The yeah. yeah. And did you lose a minus sign in the on FT? On FT? Minus <coughs> FT, yeah. Uh, yes, I agree. So let's keep that minus there. And then I'll, that makes this one minus MG plus. <laughs> Just another day. Do you want me to rotate this? I 
Okay, sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to, I said, minus mg sine theta. And hope you know, you guys correct me again. I, I, I'm, I'm doing it without notes uh, if I did something different last time. Theta plus v. Um, and then, so that's all of our equations in one thing. And then the last step, all we have to do is this is equal to the mass times acceleration in the x hat direction. Ball. Acceleration in the x hat direction, which is x double dot plus x theta dot squared minus. Okay. So here's now the total equation of motion for our ball. I'm gonna, you know. Uh, the only other thing we then need to do, basically, is if we want to get it in terms of, uh, you know, what, what we're going to, our, our objective is to get it in terms of an input of theta and an output of x. And so I just need to replace, basically, I need to understand, of course, that phi is related to x, that every time that the ball rolls, of course, it's, it's, yeah. Is that theta double dot? Yeah, it's going to be double dot phi double dot. Because it should be at this angle, angular acceleration. Like the left side of the equation. I B times B double dot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Both of these are double dot, sorry. When theta double dot and, and phi double dot. So now the only thing that, you know, again, we said this. I, I, and the last time, right? That phi is the amount that it's and it's, it's the amount that it's rotating. The rotation of the ball it has units of you know or radians per second or something like that. And so, in order to be able to get this, if I multiply this by r, then I get units of you know of x that is uh, has, you know, x dot that has units of, of meters per second. So, of course, you know phi double dot is equal uh, times r. Same process there. And so now I can write the overall equation mg sine theta plus i d over r theta double dot plus x double dot over r equal to m x double dot minus x dot. Rearrange, you know, whatever else you want to do to be able to put it into transfer function form. But the, the strategy that I said is like, the, so I, this, this looks like a nice equation of motion. It's not too bad, right? But the problem is that everything is our, our you know, it's all not linear. And so usually our procedure would be to, you know, we sort of do. Um, as engineers, we would say, okay, well, let's assume, yeah. Why did the x become an x dot from the top line there to the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you know, I'm grateful for your input. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it wasn't, didn't happen to you. Well, it's just, it's confusing. It's, it's confusing. I don't want to be confusing. I know. Sorry. You know. Yeah. Okay. So, this is what we're aiming for. Now the problem is again, what we're, our you know our assumptions are going to be that that theta is going to be you know small angles. We're going to assume that theta that stuff is not going to change very much. So we're going to assume that theta dot and theta double dot are going to be about equal to zero. And if we do that, we end up with a nice linear equation, right? Because we get this minus mg theta plus. Um, I B over R, X double dot over R is equal to M X double dot. So our linearized, you know, transfer function, I'm going to take all the steps I need to be able to do this right, right? 
quick, but I say I get IB over R squared minus M <coughs> equals minus MG theta, and then I want to be able to get X over theta, and so I get my final um, thing here says that some mass thing or whatever, and some, you know, input, and it was a 1 over ms squared. And we talked about this. These, were pro these are relatively hard problems to solve. Because if you use a proportional controller, it doesn't do what you might have liked for it to do. It doesn't end up um, allowing you to have any damping. You end up with this, you know, talk about the class, you end up with this under-damped, um, undamped, uh, uh, response. Okay, so now let's say you guys in your problem set will choose, you know, you choose the values. I don't really, it doesn't matter too much to me of I, B, and R. You choose your own size of the ball, your own size of the plank, or whatever else you want to do. And then our objective, though, is to come up with a um, controller that will let this thing work. Now, I, you know, just for our example's sake here, you guys come up with your own um, values, but I'm just going to choose for our linearized equation something that, that makes it so that I have, you know, I'm just going to choose uh, 1 over 10, 1 over s squared. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what i and r and m are that would make that happen, but just that will make it so that we end up with something that's easy for us to work with. You guys choose whatever you want to choose your own set. So, in order to be able to Let's look at what the response of this is um, in simula, right? So the way that I'm going to do that is with, I write this, you know, I write a, a, a command to MATLAB that says that S is equal to TF, open, you know, 
uh, and it assigns a transfer function type of data structure and calls it S. When I do that, I have, you know, now that says great. I have a continuous time transfer function that's called S, and I can construct something, you know, that I'm just going to call sys or whatever. One tenth times um, divided by S divided by S. So I have a one over S squared times with a mass of a tenth. And here's my system, right? Now, if I put a, you know, I don't know, if I put a step function into that system, I should get some kind of a bad response here, right? I mean, if I just, if I, like, it's like if I just put in a, if I just, and the only other thing I want to notice, too, is I'm going to actually do it with a negative sign on purpose, because it's actually, this, you know, we have a negative sign on that side, too. So let me revise my sys. So of course, what happens if I put in a step to my system? If I put in a step in the in this crazy thing, what is S? Um, so if I put in a step function into this uh, into this thing, right? What do I expect to happen? The ball should run off in the negative x direction. It should go off the cliff. In the Hopefully that's what I see. Oh yeah. Get on the ball and then the thing goes, right? Does that make sense? And so what you know, so what is what is the somebody was asking me earlier this week, like what's the implication of this negative sign, right? What does that mean that this negative sign is there? Just below the exact It's going in the net yeah, like a positive input in theta makes a negative output in X. That's all that means. If I had this be positive, it would mean that my x direction is just in the other direction or something like that. It would be weird. I mean, it wouldn't be this problem. But does that make sense? So I get a bad response there. It's a set, I mean, it's, obviously it's a bad response. But it's not doing what I want to do. What I want to do is I want to lean out there and then I want to stop it one meter out. Okay, so now our objective then is all right, this, I got a good idea. Let's control it instead of just doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a controller. And the first default controller that you, when you open up that root locus tool that is assigned to this, you know, that's the sort of default, is that it builds you a controller that looks like this. In this case, one tenth times one over s squared. It builds you this controller. So here is our x, you know, command. Here is our actual x. Here is our error. This is the theta that is actually going to be input to this and the output of our transfer function, of course, because the transfer function has the value at zero theta over x is x. The output is x. So if we build, uh, if I, for instance, start up the root locus tool by doing RL tool that we did two weeks ago, or sys, then that's the controller that it's the default that it builds. It built me this root, it built me this, uh, this piece, you know, builds me this controller. I can look at that by, for example, I can look at a control architecture. It tells me, you know, if I go to G, it would tell me that G is the system data, sorry. G is system, and the compensator right now is one, the feedback loop is one, and the V4 is one. Sort of a very default answer. Okay, so now let's try to figure out what's going on here. So this is kind of a, you know, I, I sort of, um, you know, I always say, oops, you want to always have the grid on because we can kind of tell what's going on. So with this closed loop response, I'm going to do analysis response to step command, and I'm not getting very nice answers here, right? Uh, the one you're very interested in here is step response. Y to U, or Y to, y to R to Y, which is the, which is this is R and this is Y in the MATLAB world. And so I get this infinite bad response thing. So the only thing, you know, the only the trick here is that when I have this transfer function as a negative, what this means is that 
I have to, I have to sort of rethink what, the, what this loop is telling me. Um, if I have this with a, with a, uh, you know, with a negative sign there, what it means is that uh, it, it means that as I raise theta, right, that the, that the x goes in the other direction. So in order to be able to control this with a feedback loop, I need to change the sign of this to positive so that I'm comparing my x command to an x command over here that would that have the right sort of sign. Or, or I'll, you know, the only alternative is that I could put a feed forward in front of the x command that would be negative so that I'm sort of commanding a negative one or whatever. But what I'll recommend for us is let's just do that by, ch by going to control architecture and changing the sign into um, positive. And then when you do that, you get our response that we showed, that I showed you all in class when we're controlling a conventional, um, a conventional mass, which is that we get two poles, they're under, they're completely undamped, and we get this really messy, long, undamped response. Okay? So now, the next task that we have in the problem set is I say, why don't you all design Using the root locus tool, and it shouldn't be too big a deal, a, um, a lead lag controller. And so a lead lag controller we haven't talked about too much, but it's not a big deal. Any one of the controllers that we use, they, they, you know, they all have the same sort of form, which is they're a, a Laplace domain uh, transfer function that we put in there. In this case, the idea of this Laplace domain transfer function is that it has a gain, it has a zero, and it has a pole, just one of each. So, all you gotta do in order to design this now in the Locus tool is grab a pole, put it somewhere, it's, you know, obviously both of these are, you know, no matter what your value you choose, both of these are gonna be real, a real pole and a real zero. So I'm going to choose a real pole, I'm going to choose a real zero. I, it doesn't, you know, you guys can figure out what, where to put them or whatever. But let's, let's try that. And I'll, you know, I mean the object, so, so the objective is you have three things you can engineer now. You can engineer K, you can engineer Z, and you can engineer P. What are your objectives? What would you like to achieve? Anybody? Where the ball goes, not where it goes off the edge, but it goes back and forth. Yeah, like you'd like to achieve some sort of stability. You want it to have a reasonable response. What you might like is for, you know, like for example, you might want it to, if, if this is this is X versus time, you might want it to go, oh, you know, maybe, it's okay for it to wiggle around a little bit, it's a hard problem, right? But you want it to get up there and stick up there. You don't want it to go, whoa, 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 whoa. You want to get something, okay, let's say a damping ratio of, I don't know, you guys know better, let's say 0.5-ish or something like that, that's a reasonable number, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, something that's a nice damping ratio. You want it to do it as fast as pro possible, probably. It's okay if it takes a couple seconds to roll out there and stop, but if it took, if it took 1,000 seconds, that might be a good thing. But those are your kind of objectives. So the way to test that, of course, is you can see, these are the, you know, again, these red uh, markings are the poles and zeros of your compensator. The pink dots are the closed loop poles of your closed loop transfer function. So if you wanted to, of course, you could calculate the closed loop poles of this transfer function. Uh, you know, the closed loop transfer function is a function of s, it's just going to be k, s plus z. S squared S plus P plus ten, whatever, right? So it's just a third order transfer function. You can solve that, I guess, with math or something, and find the closed loop transfer closed loop, closed loop poles. Luckily, MATLAB does it for you. You'll find the exact same answer. We'll see it up here, right? But so you can control K and P and Z. So by to control K, or let's say to control Z, you just drag this zero around. To control P, you just drag this pole around. 
To control K, you can either, you know, you have a couple of ways to control K. You can either drag the folds around, or you can go into this um, compensator editor and choose a K of your choosing. I don't know, because it's one. And you can run around with it. But your objective, remember, these, these lines are lines of constant zeta. So here's a zeta of 0.8. Here's a zeta of 0.4. In this case, I have a zeta of oh, 0.1. That might not be a really great response. Let me see what it looks like, actually. I'm curious. I can go to analysis, step to, res to response to step command. I don't want to look at that. I just want to look at my final line. OK, so you see what happens here. It starts at 0. It goes. It's doing the right thing. It's going to negative 1, but it's it's uh, with a step in theta, it's going to negative one, but it's not uh, doing a very nice response. Even over a minute, it's still kind of vibrating back and forth. So I don't know what should I, you know, what should I do? There's no magic answer or anything like that, but but um, I don't know. I'll try some stuff. Usually, a good rule of thumb is you don't want the poles and zeros to be too far, you know, apart, like factors of ten apart or something like that. Would be a little bit weird. So I have I have some you know values in there that I'm just I'm just kind of dragging around. I'm not thinking too hard about it. But oh, man, man, man. Just, you know, okay, 30 seconds to get there. Sticking, you know, that'd be that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Um, right. And so again, like, you know, I think the sort of philosophy here is that, so, so does everybody see why this response is better a little bit? It's because, I, you know, my complex poles are here at, well, very nice and damped. My, the other one, I have a real pole here that's kind of, in, that's influencing this, and is actually, you know, if we think about it again, like, the closer that it is to this line, the smaller the mega n is, which means the slower it moves. So I might, I might actually get a better response if I move that one out of it. Let's try, let's, let's do that. Let's try to see what happens. Not really appreciably better. Why is yours not a circle and it's got that straight line? How did you get that? I can make it a circle. I didn't. I just move my pole around. If I move my pole and I move my zero around, the shape of this changes because the shape of the closing, the, the location of the closing pole has changed. You can. I mean, you can make. You can make it do whatever you want. Right? So why don't you try to everybody try to design one. Everybody's could be different. I don't really care what it looks like in the end, as long as you like your response. Close it again. The green one is what's called R to U. It's the it's the actuator. Yeah. 